Welcome to our lecture online. When we're dealing with the special theory of relativity, we began to realize that there is a factor that we multiply times the time or the mass or the length that we observe from one reference frame in respect to another reference frame. For example, if we're on a stationary reference frame like the Earth, and here we have observer A looking at some object that becomes the event moving at a very large velocity, approaching the speed of light, that whatever we're measuring here and whatever we're measuring here is going to be different by a factor and that factor is now called the Lorentz factor which came from the Lorentz transformation equations and the factor is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v square over c square whatever the velocities of the event where we're measuring things we want to put that velocity in here which gives us a certain value for this particular factor called the Lorentz factor and then if we want to know what the time duration is as measured by observer A relative to what's measured by observer B, we can say that time measured by A is equal to the factor times the time measured by B. So it all comes down to calculating that factor. So here we have a list for various velocities of the event, what would be the factor, and then of course what would be the change in the measure time by observer A relative to observer B. Now, if the object is moving at 0.1 times c, 10% of the speed of light, that's quite fast, you see that the factor is still relatively small. There's only a 0.5% change in the time measured by A relative to the time measured by B. As the object continues to move faster and reaches a speed of 0.5 c, that's half the speed of light, now the factor is 1.15. So now you see about a 15% difference in the time measured by A compared to the time measured by B. So you see, even though you're moving at very, very high speeds, the effect is still relatively small. By the time you reach 0.866c, the factor now becomes equal to 2. By the time you reach 90% of the speed of light, the factor is 2.3. 95% of the speed of light, the factor is 3.2. And by the time you start reaching a speed very, very close to the speed of light, you can see that the factor begins to increase quite quickly. At 99% of the speed of light, the factor is 7. At 99.5% of the speed of light, the factor is 10. At 99.9 .9 or 0.999 times the speed of light, it's 22.4. And notice at 0.999, 999C, the factor is now 707, which means if the object is moving this fast, and the time measured by observer B, moving along with the experiment, let's say the time measured is one second, the time measured by observer A would be 707 seconds. That's a huge difference. So you can see as you get closer and closer and closer to the speed of light, the factor becomes extremely large, and the differences in the time, mass, and length observed become enormous. So here you have a good feel of how that factor is then employed to calculate the changes in the observed time, mass, and length compared to the person that's moving along with the experiment itself. And that's how it's done.